Hello viewers, welcome to Coding Interviews channel. Hope you are doing great. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe. I have created several playlists for various categories of problems such as dynamic programming, BFS, DFS, stacks, queues, and so on. Please check them out. I have uploaded the code for this particular problem to the GitHub repository. You can get the link from description below this video. Let's jump into today's problem. This is a design uh, oriented problem essentially. So let's let's try to solve okay. Seat Reservation Manager. Design a system that manages the reservation state of n seats that are numbered from 1 to n. Implement the seat manager class. Seat manager. Basically, we have a constructor here. Initialize the seat manager object that will manage n seats number from 1 to n. Right? So there are n seats which are net number from 1 to n. And another condition is all seats are initially available. So when you when you initialize the seat manager class, right, all seats are available. So none of them are reserved, basically, right? And then you have uh, another method called reserved. So what it does is fetches the smallest numbered unreserved seat and reserves it and returns it number, right? So initially when you reserve, right, when you just call, so you will be able to only call reserve without any parameters. So that means, okay, reserve seat number 10. That's not possible now, right? So you just have to say reserve. So whatever the smallest available number that is there, it will say, okay, it is reserved for you and it throws up the number back, right? That's, the, that's this method. And the sec next one is unreserved. So unreserved, you will be able to call with a number, seat number. Unreserved is a seat with given seat number. So if you want to unreserve the already reserved seat number, right, you will be able to call this method. So basically, you will have a constructor and two methods. One is for reserving and another one is for unreserving, basically. So releasing this, right? So as it said, there are like n seats, right? So one to n, right? So now uh, we are going to initialize this uh, n seats. And as part of the reserve method, right? Reserve method, right? So we can we can keep track of something like, okay, uh, a Boolean array, let's say, of length n plus one. So why I'm saying n plus one is usually in, in many of the languages, the array starts from zero index. But here we want to reserve, I mean, the seats are numbered from 1 to n. I'm reserving it from, reserving it as the size as n plus 1, as simple as that. Nothing else. But if you want to strictly manage by n, right, all you can do is whatever the seat number that you reserve, do a plus 1 and do a return it. When you reserve, do the seat number minus 1 and unreserve it, right? So you can do that also. But since it is just only one extra space, I'm, I'm going with essentially n plus 1, right? It's up to you. If you want to go with n, you could you could do it that way as well, right? When we go look at the code, right, I can, I can probably bring that up again. So now we have all these and we say, okay, false, false, false. Basically, they are not reserved so far, right? that's how we are assuming so when we call reserve right so that is going to go through the array and find the smallest number so initially once for, for the first call the array will be become like this it will be true and it returns zero right and if i call reserve again so as we are saying it should go through the entire array, right? Uh, basically. So we go here and see, okay, is it reserved? Yes, it is already reserved. So we cannot reserve anymore. So we will come here. Uh, okay, it's not reserved. We will basically, we said, this is written one. I'm just assuming basically false, false, right? So as I said, I'm going to allocate more right one element more right returns two right so that's like that so when you have to reserve right so if you are calling if n is equal to let's say and for example example n is equal to 100 
and if you call reserve like 50th time right 50th time then in this particular case you will be going through the first element second element third element and all and realizing okay they are already reserved and till you reach the 50th index you will not be able to reserve right but so that means the reserve is going to take in the worst case order of n time right so in the worst case if you do this right in the worst case uh, it, it is going to take order of n time right but can we improve right all we are looking at the smallest numbered unreserved seat right so smallest numbered unreserved seat. so if if you can improve right if you can improve that would be nice right so unreserved is basically you'll go to that seat number and uh, do it so basically if i call unreserved uh, let's say three right unreserved right let's say three so you'll just say okay you already have this let's say i have reserved three also here and since i'm just saying this returns three we will say true okay so in this particular case unreserved right what we'll say is okay we are going to this is how the array is looking right so this is how the array is looking right so unreserved three we are going to transform this to what right this to this right so basically you are freeing up this space for anybody else to reserve so in this particular case this became a available seat now right so whenever you call reserve right it should return three instead of the 50th where i mean what wherever you are right it doesn't matter but it should return the smallest number right so that's the understanding here so but in this case unreserve is fast enough basically it is doing in the order of one time it's fast enough but whereas the previously the reserve reserve case it is taking order of n time but can we improve the reserve unreserve is good so we are good it is taking constant time we are completely fine with that but unreserve can can that be improved order of n time to somewhere better yes we can we can definitely improve so there are multiple ways that we can do it so let's let's look at the option one right so let's call it option one so what we are going to have is we will keep track of the available seats in the boolean array right and we will keep track of two things one is index of next available seat right index of next available seat we'll call possibly uh, next seat next seat okay and uh, that's one and second one is we will keep a sorted set right we'll keep a sorted set so why we are going to keep the sorted set just because whenever we unreserve a seat we will add that unreserved seat to the sorted set so let's let's take an example and go from there right so let's take an example this is our first example that we are going to follow and see so we are saying there are five right so let's let's actually take five elements right so here there are already five elements let me actually take it right so these are all false as i said i am going to initialize when it is 5 i am going to initialize 6 we already talked about that right so we are saying reserve so in this particular case we will be returning 1 right so we are saying true right and at that point in time that point in time this is how it is looking and when you re say reserve it should ret return two so this reserve returned one 
this reserve return to right but now they are unreserving what is that unreserving they are unreserving the seat number two right so at this point in time the, so here uh, we did not keep track actually next seat next available seat is two so at this time next available seat is three right so initially next available seat is one right so here next available seat is two now we are calling on reserve what two so in this particular case it will become so on reserve right on reserve two that means this was true right initially this um, i just copied and pasted here so you will have to say false so that means you are freeing up basically it is not reserved anymore but still the next seat is pointing to three so should we go back and point to two or where it actually should point right so if if two were called after allocating three then it would be even difficult to manage but here in this case okay two is reserved and unreserved that's easy but if two is reserved and three also is reserved and then two is unreserved right then you have to jump back your next seat pointer to two positions back right but after that when you when you allocate seat number two and if you say seat number next seat is three that is actually incorrect then you have to advance your next seat pointer again so in that particular case also the reserve method will not be able to perform in any better than order of n so for that purpose what we are going to do is we are going to use this sorted set so what we will say is we will still point our next seat right next seat will be still 3 right next seat will be still 3 but our sorted set will be added with right our starter set will be added with two that's how it is right and next time whenever reserve is called the next time whenever reserve is called so let's go we call that unreserved right so now reserve is called so what it should return next seat is at three if it returns three right that is a wrong answer because we have to fetch the smallest not numbered unreserved state right what is the smallest unreserved state smallest numbered unreserved state it is seat number two so this should return two so but the next seat is at three how can we return two right so in this particular case first if at all the sorted set has any elements right if the sorted set has any elements you should check whether the sorted sets minimum is less than the next seat so if sorted set minimum is less than next seat right then you should take you should return ss dot minimum right and remove minimum from sorted set right exactly so remove minimum from sorted set let's write ss right so this is what you should do so if you do that what happens your next seat will be pointing to still three right your next seat will be pointing to still three and your ss will be empty and you return two right so now this will be updated to true right that's how we are going to employ the sorted set so this is option one that's how we are going to essentially keep track of the next seat and the sorted set so that's how we are doing but let's look at the option two do we have anything else can we do anything better right so we are keeping track of all these things uh in the array the seats in the array and also we are employing the sorted set and we are employing the next seat so all these three things basically right so we have an array seats array seats array 
and next seat pointer and uh, sorted set three of them do we need all of them is the question right so do we need seats array do we need next seat and do we need sorted set let's see let's see can we just go with only sorted set that means you will have sorted set right you will have sorted set where you initialize all of the n, n seats 1 2 3 4 5 right in this particular case we will run through the same exam right we will run through the same exam when we reserve so in this particular case what we say is res, ret, reserve this will return basically ss dot min right and of course remove ss dot min from ss basically sorted set so the, what that will give ss dot min is one right so now ss will contain what two three four five right that's how it is as simple as that next if you call reserve again right same process Rem ss dot min remove ss dot min from s and what is this that mean it will be 2 right so 2 will not be there in ss and next on reserve this is interesting right on reserve is 2 so 2 we are saying on reserve what we should do on reserve 2 what we should do here so we are going to do some magic here what we are going to do is add 2 to ss that means ss becomes 2 3 4 5 right so since sorted it is a sorted set as and when you add an element to the sorted set it will be added in the sorted order so when you call reserve right as we are following the similar method right from here right we are following the similar method right you will say ss dot min remove ss dot min from s so we are going to remove and return what two so in this particular case what we essentially did is we are only using the sorted set nothing else so in the previous option one right so let me let me separate them just to give you a better understanding right so we are using we are using all this seats array next seat sorted set and all this but in this case we are only using sorted set nothing else right only using sorted set nothing else so with only sorted set we are able to solve it so if we compare the difference between those two right so the reserve method in the first option is order of one right and sorry i said reserve or no yeah unreserved is also order of one so in the same case right in in both cases in the option two case also the time complexity is still same right there is a there is a slight more than order of one here in both cases actually it's not order of one all the time right so the sorted set internally is represented with a heap or a similar data structure or a tree something like that right so a binary tree a heap so when you insert an element into a sorted set it is not always order of one right that means we have to change this not as order of one but it is on the order of log n similarly the reserve here also it is log n right basically you can call you can do 
get anything from sorted set or add anything from sorted set so in this case if you want to get anything from sorted set you will have all the time is dot min right but when you remove the element from the sorted set it will have to reheapify because the sorted set internally is implemented with a heap so that means the reserving and unreserving both of them will be essentially taking log n right so similarly here also when you unreserve right when you unreserve you are essentially adding that element to the sorted set i'm sorry so the reserve is the reserve is still one actually yes reserve was still one so far what we have discussed but we will see again so when you unreserve you are go going to take the element and adding it to the sorted set right you are adding the element to the sorted set but when you add the element to the sorted set how much it will become as we said log n right that will be the complexity so but when you reserve right for as long as for the first two seeds it was order of one so far but when you reserve from here it is looking at the sorted set and extracting the element from sorted set right that means you are incurring log n here also where n is the elements in the sorted set right so in both cases at the end of the all operations when when we saw all operations right when you see just only one two operations i mean the first two operations so far that was uh, appearing as order of one but when you come when you come to the third operation basically unreserved and fourth operation reserve the time complexity changed from order of one to order of log n right so that's the tiny difference so when when you reserve and unreserve it is not actually the order of one but it is order of log n where n is the number of elements in the sorted set that's what we need to really understand so in both options right there is no big difference between the time complexity here but let's look at the space complexity right so space right time complexity there is no big notable difference actually but space so here you are using three things a seeds array and next seeds this is basically a simple variable that's not a problem irrespective of the size of the n you are just using next seed as simple variable so this this is not much so here you are using sorted set and seeds array so both right you are using sorted set and seeds array so in essence in the worst case Space for the seeds array is out of n plus the sorted set could also grow to order of n, right? So that means you are looking at order of 2n, right? So we will remove the constants from the complexity anyway. So space complexity will come down to order of n again. So as you see it is order of 2n as order of n plus n it is equal to right but since you are going to remove the constants from the complexity it would be still order of n and here anyway we are only using the sorted set nothing else so it will have all the n elements so we will say okay order of n that's it so even in the space complexity wise also we are not seeing any big difference in the improvement uh, big difference but when you count these constants right right when you count these constants it is a considerable difference for example if n is 1 million in this case we are using only 1 million space but here we will be using 2 million space right but in the asymptotic notation like uh, big O notation if there is no big difference at all both of both options are taking out of simple but in reality, I mean, in, in practical, right, in practice, the option one consumes more space than option two. So now let's look, go look at the code. So whatever the process that we have talked so far, right, it's the same uh, code that we are going to see. So for now, in this code, right, 
I am going to show you the code only for the option one. So I am leaving the option two as an exercise. So if I show you the option one, right? Option two is like uh, it's it's pretty much all all the same, but it'll have a little bit lesser code, I I believe, right? So we are going to I'm 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 presenting the option one code here. So here, as we talk, we are calling, I mean, we are assigning all the seats here. Seats are assigned from one to n plus one. Basically, as I said, since it is there, uh, we are allocating from one to n, the seats are numbered. I am allocating one more than whatever it is as the arrays in C sharp are starting from zero. And next available seat, I am initializing to one and I am initializing the sorted set, right? That's how it is in the constructor. And when you say reserve, first I am checking if the sorted set is empty or not. If it is empty, if it is not empty, that means it has more than one element, more than zero elements, and sorted sets minimum is less than next reserve. What we are going to say is we are going to extract the sorted set minimum and we are going to re return the sorted set, sorted set minimum and remove the element from sorted. That is what we are doing essentially. This is what we talked, right? And then if it is not, that means if a sorted set doesn't have any elements or sorted set minimum is not less than next result, then in that case, we are going to just return whatever the next result and allocate that seat and basically reserve that seat and update next result basically to the next element and go from there. That's it. That is how we are essentially going to go from, right? And next, on reserve. Unreserve is pretty simple, right? SS dot add. So this is where sorted set we are adding the seat number and seats of seat number is equal to false. Basically, we are unreserving the seat from the array as well. So this is how we are able to achieve the code for this, right? So as I said, we we have the code here for the approach, and basically the option one. But if you turn the option two, right? Basically, you will be knocking off this Boolean array and in the initialization phase, right, you will be adding all the one to n elements in the sorted array, I mean sorted set. And one thing that will become easy is you are going to have, this will be same and you will be knocking off this line. Basically, seats of seat number is equal to false. You will be knocking off, right, as simple as that. And when you reserve, all you are going to do is this much. That's it nothing else so that code will be even simpler than what you have here right so i am leaving that for the exercise for now and we can we can see one more time the space and time complexity so time complexity for both of the reserve and unreserved methods is order of log n and space complexity is order of n so it is same for both the approaches if you have any further questions please post them in the comment section below this video I have posted the code to the GitHub repository. You can find the link in description below this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe and share among your friends. Please click on the bell icon so that you will be notified about all my future videos. Thank you for watching. I will be back with another problem very soon. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.